Good morning. Welcome to a moment of truth. I'm Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God of the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. I am so glad that you have taken time out of your ta your day to uh, come and to listen to what we have to say. Hopefully, something we say will be a blessing to you and and to encourage you and give you an understanding of God's word. This this word today is the uh, is the most important thing that we need to be focusing on because this is our roadmap to heaven. It's the way to get from earth to heaven. It's the way to get out of all the trouble that's in this world. It's a way to get the things in life you need. God has promised us that if we would live for him, that he would give us not only in, in the end, but he would give us things that pertain to life and godliness. So today you can have Whatever God's God is yours for the asking, if you'll just believe and trust in Him. We've been, we've been talking about this uh, heaven's anchor to the soul, and I'll, I'll go to Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and I'll, I'll read the 18th and the 19th verse for you again, and we'll get into this a little bit more. Heaven's anchor to the soul. If you, if you are steadfast, you're not uh, carried about by everything, every whim that comes along. You've got your focus set on God's Word, and that's the important thing. I hope that you do today. I really hope that you do care more about what God has to say than what this world has to offer, because this world's coming to an end. And I believe that just as sure as I'm sitting here today, this world is coming to a swift end. And, and uh, when it does, we just need to be ready. That's all it takes, just having your heart and life right with Jesus Christ. It's all in the heart. It's all in the heart. Listen to this. Um, that by two immutable things, this is Hebrews 6 and 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lie hope, lay hope Hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Uh, Jesus Christ, he back in the day, in biblical day, uh, they would bring the the priest would go into into the the uh, tabernacle, and he would offer up for the sins of the people. And he would go into the to the most holy, and only he was allowed to go into the most holy to offer the sacrifices, and and to as as you can read in Hebrews the ninth chapter it talked about it that he would go in. Let's see if I can read where this is at. Um, this is Hebrews the ninth chapter in the seventh verse. It says, "But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood." which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. Uh, see, almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Your sins today, all, all of our sins today, the only way that we can get cleansed from that, the only way that we can get uh, free from the bondage that sin has is by blood. It, it comes from blood. Now, in, in the, under the law, in biblical time, before Jesus Christ shed his blood, the only way that you could uh, have any type of um, forgiveness is by an offering of a sacrifice. And the priest would go in once a year and offer for those sins, but it, it, couldn't, make the, uh, the, it couldn't make them perfect. It couldn't get them completely cleansed. It could give them uh, forgiveness, but every year he would have to go back in. But Jesus Christ, he didn't do that every year. He died once, and if you'll go to Hebrews, the uh, ninth chapter, and the 24th verse, it says, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself now to appear unto God for us. When God went, when Jesus Christ went into a holy place, that holy place that he went into, he died once for us. Uh, as you can find in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and the 19th verse, I believe it is. Uh, Having therefore, brother, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. He went in once through the veil and consecrated a way of, made holy a way for us to have eternal life. See, Jesus Christ, this, as we have shown in the 6th chapter and the 19th verse, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, 
both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. It was Jesus Christ that went in to that veil. Back under the law, the priest had to go in every year. But Jesus went once. He went once as a pure sacrifice for our sins. He, he don't have to die anymore. It was an everlasting. If you read the 20th verse of the 6th chapter, it said, Wherewith, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He's never going to have to die again. He went to heaven. He died and went through the veil to give you hope. That's what I'm teaching today. When Jesus Christ went into heaven, he pierced through the veil and give us a hope. That hope we have is an anchor of the soul. If you want to be sure, if you want to be steadfast, you got to have Christ in your life. Um, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, this is 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. I'm going I'm to turn over there because there's some, there's some more verses that I want to read right there with this 1 Corinthians. If When Jesus Christ went to God, when he went to heaven, he, he became a, a hope for us. The Bible tells us that we ought to always be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within us. That hope is Jesus Christ. How do we know that hope? How do we know that hope? Before I get into this in 1 Corinthians, I'm going to read, um, I believe, let's see if I can think right where this, say, this is. First, I believe it's 1 Peter 3, maybe it's 1. 1 Peter 1 and verse 3. 1 Peter 1 and verse 3, um, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. Jesus said, I am he that was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. He's, he's alive forever. He's never going to die again. You see, he was, he was made a priest after the order of Melchizedek. That Melchizedek priest was an everlasting priest. It was to never go away. The, the order of Aaron was, was an earthly order, and it was, it, was to, it was to come to an end. But the order of Melchizedek was forever. That's why Jesus was, was put in as a priest of the order of Melchizedek, because he'll never have to die again. When he became that priest, he'll never have to die again. He'll never have to suffer again once he entered in. Back under the law, every year they would have to go in and offer a sacrifice for the sins of the people, for the errors of the people, even the priest, the things that he done. But this, this sacrifice that Jesus made was a spotless lamb. It was a lamb of glory. It was our hope, Christ who is our hope. He is the one that pierced through the veil and went into heaven. Nobody else, nobody else can take you there. There's only one way to get from earth to heaven, and that's by this new and living way. How do we have this hope? It come how do we have an answer for this hope? And this is it in 1 Peter uh, 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If Jesus had not resurrected, we wouldn't have any promise. We wouldn't have any hope. We would be without hope and we would be miserable. That next verse says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Who is it that went up there? It was Jesus Christ. Now I want to read this, this 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. He said, Yea, and we are found false. I'm sorry, 15 and 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Why is he saying that? I want to go up above there, and I'm going to read the 13th verse, now the 12th verse reading down. Now if we preach that, if we, now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain? Your faith is also vain. If Christ has not raised from the dead, everything that you could ever believe in for salvation is in vain. Your faith is in vain. If you believe in Jesus Christ, that he came here and that he died, if he did not resurrect, then that faith is in vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, 
whom he had, ra had raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Uh, there's something I really want you to see right here in just a second. And if Christ be not raised, our faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. If it's not important to get out of sin, then Jesus Christ would have never even had to resurrect. If Christ had not resurrected, then ye are yet in in your sin. What about a person that is still yet in their sin? Christ raised to get us out of sin. And that's what we want to do. If you have Christ in your heart and in your life, he gives you a chance to get out of that sin. And you can do that. Listen to this next verse. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. They also which are fallen asleep. How about all our loved ones that's went on before? If Christ hasn't resurrected, if he's not went up there, there's no hope of ever seeing them again. What about our life? I used to hear a preacher say a long, long time ago when I was a child growing up, he said, I'd hate to know that I'd work for a man all day long knowing at the end of the day he's just going to kill me. We want a reward. We are working for that reward that God has got for us. We're judged by our fruits. We are sanctified by our fruits. Today we are justified by our fruits, I should say. That justification comes by what we do. Listen, listen to this. Then they which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all mis most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. The sinner, uh, today, if, if, we, if we don't have any hope, it's because that we don't have Christ in our life. The sinner that's still living in, in sin, he has no hope because he don't have Christ. If you're still living in sin, there's no hope. Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 28, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Listen to this. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The only way you're going to have Jesus Christ is to come out of sin. We don't need to be living in sin. For if in this life only we had hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. That's what he's talking about. We are miserable. The only way we can... Get out of sin is through Christ and his blood as he told us that he entered into the veil. When he went, pierced through the veil and entered into heaven, he became that hope, that anchor that we have for our soul. There's nothing more important than your soul today. Give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. I preach repentance a lot, and, and I know that, that a lot of people don't maybe like that nowadays. Uh, but that's what Jesus done, and he preached repentance, wanting people to turn their heart and life around. That's what this world needs. They need to get back to the basics of, of Christianity and start living for him and then move on into perfection and get grounded and settled. That's what we need today, to, to abound in the work of the Lord, get rid of all that Satan has to offer us, get the things that God has to offer us. He's given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. May God bless you is my prayer. Come and visit us 2211 South Dixie Highway.